We're here with Lucy Liu, the star of CBS All Access's Why Women Kill. She's a primetime Emmy nominee for Ally McBeal. And we're going to talk to her today about her, her role as Simone Grove. Uh, before we get started, here's a clip. Move along, kid. Sorry, we were just leaving. Not you, sweet cheeks. You're busted. Busted? For what? Soliciting. You think I'm a hooker? For God's sake, I'm wearing East Saint Laurent. I didn't say you weren't successful. Uh, she's with me, sir. She was just asking directions because we got lost. Relax, kid. I'm doing you a favor. You don't want your first time to be with a pro. How dare you? I'm a well-known philanthropist. I don't need to know your specialty. Let's go. What? Uh, Come on. Hey, seriously, sir, she's my girlfriend. I find that hard to believe. Well, uh, show him your license. Oh, uh, uh. Oh. If we just met, how do I know his name is Tommy Hart and that he lives in Pasadena at 74 Oakhurst Drive? His birthday's March 10th. Okay, so if you're a couple from Pasadena, why are you going to a motel in Azusa? We are having an illicit affair. We've driven 30 miles to avoid being spotted by his mother, who is my best friend, and my husband, who is gay. Well, I gotta give you points for creativity. That's great. <laughs> so tell me about coming to Why Women Kill. What brought you to the project? Well, I got a call from Mark Cherry, who I met at, an Emmy ceremony, I don't even know how long ago it was, but he was very uh, complimentary and he was doing great at the time with uh, Desperate Housewives and winning everything. And he, he talked about this character and then he sort of took me through the entire platform of where she was gonna go. And I am a huge fan of comedy and I'm a huge fan of Mark Cherry. And after him sort of explaining where he was going to go with Simone and her husband, I was really intrigued. And also it was such a, it was a closed storyline. It was 10 episodes. So that seemed much more manageable. And after ha having come off of a seven year series that was more sort of a procedural, I thought it was going to be a refreshing change. And also the idea of the eighties, and exploring that was also a, a big draw. Tell me about the comedy with him. Uh, you, you have such wonderful, great, you're wonderful with deadpan. You have uh, excellent lines in this. How is Mark with comedy? Is it very, is there a lot of, um, you know, being, being um, having an ear for tone? Uh, is there a lot of saying the lines multiple times to get it just right? Uh, blocking. I mean, I don't want to spoil anything, but that finale was amazing. Just everyone, just everyone being involved in that. That the finale was incredible. I, I'll start from the beginning. I, I think that the script was so key, and Mark is is such a perfectionist when it comes to how the characters are developed, and he also is so good with timing. He's so specific, and he understands the rhythm. And I think for Simone and for Carl and and in, and their whole sort of family of misfits, um, their neighbors and your best friends and you know their lovers, there is a nice syncopation to how he uh, lays them out. And so there's a speed and there's a category for when things occur. And he's so good with that. And so when we do the rehearsals, he has an idea of where he wants to go. And when he explains it, it really helps. I mean, I think you have to come in with a very prepared and very able to improvise as well. And I'm not saying improvise off of the script as much as it is improvising physicality. Um, and I think what was important was to play Simone much straighter, you know, and allow her to be this character in a very real way, even though she's very colorful, she's very, um, what other people would say is maybe broad, but she's not. In her world, she's perfectly normal. And that is, the, <laughs> that is the way that she likes to present herself. And that is the way that she is comfortable. And, and I think the more real you make that character uh, without playing it up, it's just, you know, it's not a send up, 
the more it's relatable and in some ways funnier because she's in her own kind of microcosm. So um, for those who haven't seen the show, tell us more about Simone. She's in a very interesting marriage at the 80s, uh, in the 80s. Um, it's just really touching what she goes through. She's high maintenance and materialistic, but she's got a big heart. Tell us more about her and, and Carl. Simone is somebody who is very much into what people think of her. Um, she wants the best of everything. She wants to make an impression constantly. Um, she's married to someone that she fell in love with as opposed to someone who had money. So she's the one with the money in this particular relationship. This is her third marriage. And um, she finds out very much in the beginning of the season that her husband has been cheating on her. And this spins her into a, a bit of a rabbit hole. And then she finds herself becoming very vulnerable and then takes on a lover that is her best friend's son, who she's known since he was a very young child. So antics ensue. I don't exactly know how much I'm supposed to say about what happens, but she gets involved in something that is very frivolous in the beginning, but it turns into something very, um, very important. And it, it opens up her heart in a, in a great way. Uh, and it also allows her to recognize that her husband's infidelity is something that she in the end supports. Yeah. But it was it, just wonderfully played and, and very, captures the 80s, make, makes us look back to see how far we've come, you know, in being better people. And uh, it, it's really a beautiful story. It's really a beautiful storyline. Yeah, I have to attribute all of that to to Mark and to Joe Keenan. I mean, honestly, they, they were able to even in the most difficult moments uh, where someone was, you know, it was a very serious moment to infuse humor still. I don't know how they were able to do that, but it was pretty remarkable. Now you got to direct episode eight and you've directed a lot of episodic television before, specifically with a number of elementary episodes. How was it directing comedy over drama? And tell us about directing yourself. Uh, I have to say this was the first time I was able to interact with the other actors because we were all in different decades. So we never really connected unless we were in the hair and makeup trailer. <laughs> so that was really fun. And I, had I not done that, I don't think I would have gotten to know everyone as I did. Um, I think directing myself was a little bit easier because I had done it before on elementary. And in elementary, Johnny and I were on screen quite a bit of the time. So this time I had the ability to have the luxury of having just one third of you know, screen time um, because there were two other uh, women that were being featured. So there was uh, Ginny in the 60s and then Kirby in, in the contemporary times. Uh, so that was actually a big treat for me. Um, I, I have to say that directing comedy is very specific because you the timing has to be very right. But to be honest, a lot of it was, I don't want to take any credit for it because it was written down. And also the actors were so brilliant and they already, you know, you trust that they're going to bring something to the table and they always do. They always do. And I was able to work uh, very closely with um, the crew and that having known them before, just as acting in the first seven episodes, you form a very intimate relationship. And so there's a kind of a, uh, a given camaraderie and a trust, uh, which, you know, and I know everybody's name. So it's very easy to actually understand what's important and what's a priority and what I would want as a director. So I'm directing and I'm editing at the same time. I'm not going to be wasteful with my time because it's, it's a lot. It was a lot for the crew, just all of the time uh, spent lighting and setting up and, uh, it was long hours. I think by the eighth episode, everyone was getting a little bit tired. So I was lucky to have that uh, benefit. How long was it? Like how long was your pre-production and how long was your actual production? 
I think pre-production was about eight days and then the production could be nine to 10 days, depending on the episode. Um, because it was, it was very, it was very involved. I mean, I think on elementary and other shows that I've worked on, including Luke Cage, directing those uh, seemed a little bit easier because there was only one storyline and those characters that you were following from page one to page 60 or whatever it was. And for this, it was um, different time periods. So there were locations that would be uh, required for what the look was. And, you know, there's only so much CGI you can really do. And uh, we had really such a fantastic crew um, and set of designers uh, that it made it very realistic. But then, you know, you have to do your job and make sure that it all connects. Well, before we go, uh, one last question to ask you. I know it's an anthology, it's an anthology series, season two. Are, you, are any plans for you to be involved in season two? And are you able to tell us anything? Season two, I'm not in because we had a closed storyline. So Simone uh, won't be back for season two. But I think the main frame uh, and the main event is really Mark Cherry and his team. So they'll be back. So I think you'll, I mean, I, I'll be tuning in because I'm going to be really curious to see what happens. I don't know anything um, about what's happening next. Um, they did invite me back to come and direct. And if I have the ability to, I will absolutely. I loved working with everybody. Um, but I don't have any sneak peeks about that. I think, I mean, I think Mark would be the person to ask because he's full of wonderful ideas and maybe he'll share some of that with everybody. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was my pleasure. And thank you for inviting me. I love Deadline.